Hey guys, I'm Sage Valentine. I'm back here to review another episode of AMC's The Walking Dead. This time it's all about Season 7, Episode 9, entitled Rockin' the Road. So here are my thoughts about the scene with Father Gabriel. I did not see anybody in that car and I watched that scene three times. Does that mean that there was nobody in that car? No, because that person could have been sitting on the floor. Because when they gave us that camera angle, as we see the front seat and then we see the boxes in the back seat and then we see Father Gabriel gassing up the car and putting boxes in the trunk and closing the trunk and closing the gate, we don't see everything. So I assume that we're going to get another scene where we're going to see him get into the car and we're going to see who the heck was in the car. But again, I watched that scene a couple times. I didn't see that person. So obviously they were hunkered down in the front seat. And it felt like somebody startled Father Gabriel. And that's why he knocked over those cans. And he seemed like he was in a big rush. So we're going to find out what was going on with that. And I did read a comment online where somebody was saying that perhaps Father Gabriel <clears throat> and Rosita made a pact. And Father Gabriel was told to stockpile food and weapons and take them somewhere. So we get to the scene with Gregory talking to team family and he's not here for getting into any fights with Negan and the Saviors. He wants nothing to do with Rick and the crew. He says the group failed. He's done with them. He owes them nothing. He's nothing more than a spineless jellyfish. He still can't get anybody's name right. And he's afraid of the saviors. I'm just rolling my eyes like, why am I not surprised? Like, he just wants any excuse for Rick and the crew to leave so that he can continue his fake rapport with the saviors. Rick even asks, Gregory, you know, we really don't need the saviors, but do you think we need the saviors? And Gregory gives him this, like, passive-aggressive answer, like, okay, I guess, and no, and I'm just like... This is why I really don't like this dude. And everybody's fed up with Gregory as they should be. And an awesome thing happens in the next scene as the group is standing out in the hallway and Rick is like, listen, we don't need Gregory. We have our group. We've got Sasha. We've got Maggie. We've got Jesus. And then Enid comes in because I think someone said we also have Enid. And she reveals that People are outside of Gregory's mansion waiting to talk to Rick and the group. And this woman, Birdie, who reminds me so much of this character, Brianna from the comics, that it's ridiculous. She says that she wants to help fight the saviors and everybody else out there also agrees. And right now our heroes need help and another group or groups to join in on the cavalry so that they can take on Negan and the saviors a la all out war because right now they are marching to war so Rick and the group want to rush back to Alexandria Jesus is like nope I have a walkie talkie we can listen in to everything they're talking about he wants to take them to see King Ezekiel so the group makes it to the kingdom they meet up with Richard and Alvaro Alvaro is like the coolest character ever I don't remember if we got his name in the comics but all I know is that he was just as chill in the comics as he is on the TV show. So Daryl doesn't want anything to do with going inside the kingdom, but everybody else wants to stay and they want to go inside. And they have to hand over their guns and leave the car. Richard is pissed off because Richard brought, Richard, Jesus brought this crew to the kingdom. And Richard starts talking about the saviors and how dire the situation is and it needs to be dealt with and Jesus pretty much tells him well these people here they can help you they can join in on the fight because they want to fight the saviors as well the kingdom looks like paradise to the group team family is amazed by it and the amount of people that are there but they wonder can these people fight all of a sudden Tara sees Morgan everybody hugs him or at least I think it was Tara it was Sasha and I don't remember who else hugged him somebody else hugged him and Morgan tells, I think it's Daryl and Rick, about Carol and how she left and she wants to get away from everyone. And he tells 
Rick and Daryl also about how he had to kill that savior to save Carol. And on a side note, in the comic books, at this point when the group meets Ezekiel, the storyline jumps back and forth to Spencer talking to Negan or preparing himself to talk to Negan and the whole shebang happens kind of at the same time. Everyone is surprised by Shiva and she's absolutely beautiful. Rick tries to appeal to King Ezekiel, who is iffy about the whole situation. And on a side note, I don't blame him, but I can see how eventually he would have to join the fight. But I don't blame him in his stance about the situation. I don't. And I also don't blame the group for getting frustrated with him as well. And Ezekiel's pissed off because Jesus told Rick about that deal that he has with the Savior, and it's not known to anybody in the kingdom but the people in the room. And I guess the other knights as well. So Morgan learns about Abe, Glenn, Spencer, and Olivia's death at the hands of Negan, and how Daryl was taken and he escaped, and how Eugene is stuck at the mercy of the kingdom. And Morgan is sorry that they all are gone. Richard basically says he wants to join the fight against Negan and Saviors. They need to strike first and set things right. And the time is now. Ezekiel asks Morgan for his point of view. And I'm already like, okay, here we go. All life is precious. Morgan doesn't want to do this. And Morgan comes out with this whole, if we can find another way to deal with Negan, we have to. Maybe it's about capturing him and holding him. And that whole statement is a nod to the comic books. And when it happens, guys, I'm going to go all out in the explanation. But if I tell you about it right now, it's going to ruin what is about to happen. Because that whole situation is not pertinent right now. Because right now, we are at March to War heading to All Out War. So Rick tells the story about this rock in the road and how this girl found gold He's trying to convince Ezekiel to get on the same page with him and Richard and everybody in that room. And Ezekiel's like, we'll talk about this in the morning. I will deliver my decree in the morning. And on a side note, when this meeting happens in the comic book, Dwight pops up. So I assume that in the comic books... If another meeting, or in comic books, sorry, in the TV show, if another meeting pops up, all of a sudden Dwight's just going to pop up out of nowhere. So we see Ben out in the woods. He's training by himself and he comes across Carol, who is not happy to see him. Ben seems like a sweet kid, a happy kid. I don't think he's going to survive very long when the war starts. He may be one of the early casualties. But if he's not, his death is going to be really, really sad. Carol gives him some advice. Don't wander out here all alone. You'll get yourself killed. And Ben says that Ezekiel needs to know that you're okay, even if he didn't ask that you were okay. So later we see Ezekiel delivering the I Have a Dream speech, you know, Martin Luther King's famous speech, to Ben's brother as Ben's brother is falling asleep. This dude seems to have awesome paternal instincts in my opinion ben tells ezekiel he's getting good and he tells ezekiel he saw carol and he thinks that you know the kingdom should say yes to rick they should help them they need to be a part of that fight so we learn the next day after watching a tiny little bit of everyone learning archery well those at the kingdom who aren't farming and you do notice the girl who has a prosthetic arm was at a prosthetic leg and somebody else had a prosthetic arm or leg. And we see people training to be knights. And Ezekiel basically tells Rick and the crew, listen, this is the life here. He wanted more and he wanted to expand. And to me, that sounds a lot like Negan. So it goes back to what Carrie Payton said on The Talking Dead, where he said that Negan and Ezekiel are more alike than they are different of course we know that ezekiel gives his people hope while negan rules via fear but in this whole expansion thing that sounds a hell of a lot like the saviors to me so anyway ezekiel says people lost limbs 
Children lost their parents during a war with the dead. He has to worry about his own people. Daryl pops off with this whole Ezekiel, you don't sound like a king thing. And Ezekiel keeps his calm. And he basically says, I'm sympathetic to your plight, guys. But he ends up offering Daryl asylum and tells him the saviors don't set foot in these walls. And pretty much Daryl learns he has to save the kingdom and he's not happy about that. Everybody's upset that Ezekiel won't join the fight. And I completely understand how they feel, but I also understand that Ezekiel doesn't want his people to go through another casualty again. Or another war again. But eventually he's going to have to join up. So we get to the whole Sasha telling Rosita, we both had sex with the same dead guy It doesn't make us friends thing. And I'm just like, what brought on this 360 degree turn? Because if you remember in the mid-season, and I know my <laughs> I know my collar keeps falling. In the mid-season finale, everybody was hugging and we are the world and shiny happy people. And then all of a sudden this nasty comet comes up. And I'm just like, the heck is going on with that? And on a side note, Sasha never had a chance to sleep with Abraham because don't forget, Abraham moved in. And then the next thing that you know, the group had to get up and take Maggie, or at least try to take her to the hilltop because Maggie got sick. But for Rosita to come out of her mouth and say that to Sasha was messed up because Sasha didn't want anything to do with Abraham until Abraham had resolved his relationship with Rosita. And Rosita's mad at Sasha, but Rosita should really be mad at Abraham. Because Sasha feels really bad about the whole situation. Abraham didn't. Morgan wants to talk some more. He thinks that they can talk it out or whatever. I'm just like, Morgan, bye. Um, Richard says the kingdom needs to be in charge because they are the ones making the saviors stronger with the fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, and the pork. So, Daryl learns he has to stay behind and Rick is like, listen, you need to talk to Ezekiel or at least stare him into submission. Get him on our page, the same page. Negan is upset that Fat Joey is dead and he asks for a moment of silence. The group comes upon this roadblock made with cars and wires and explosives. And immediately I realize that is one of Fat Joey's traps. The traps that are keeping the huge walker herds at bay. And now that he's dead, there is no one who knows how to do that. So the Walker problem is about to become a very big, big, big problem. As I said in the mid-season finale review. And if you want to know what I said, I will include the link below in the Walking Dead Season 7 playlist that I have compiled together so far. So... The group realizes they need the explosives that are in these traps, so they have to figure out how to disarm them. All of a sudden, Negan says over the walkie-talkie that he knows Daryl's gone. Simon volunteers to go search for Daryl, and Negan basically says that the saviors should tear that sleepy little bird up. So pretty much, the group has to hurry up and get these explosives and head back before the saviors get there so everyone disarms the tnt and the other explosives rick and the others need this herd they see coming towards them to stay on the highway everyone has to block their way with the cars and by their way i mean the walkers obviously so the herd seems to be getting closer and closer and i'm sitting there biting my nails like oh my god what's about to happen Sasha and Jesus are sent back to the hilltop to tell Maggie that they're still fighting and they're still on board with this take out Negan thing. Michonne and Rick decide to hotwire two cars and then they clothesline this gigantic herd, which was the coolest, most epic walker kill ever in Walking Dead television history ever. <laughs> and this explosion that they set takes out the rest of the walkers that weren't killed by the clothesline. So Michonne is trying to calm down Rick because as they were 
heading back to the car this huge walker herd was descending upon them and it wasn't looking good at all and michonne is in the back seat and she tells rick we can make it we're the ones who su survive we're the ones who live so no matter what you think of the ship raccoon or rashon they are a very badass duo and thank you to the writer of this episode i believe it was angela kang if i'm not mistaken <laughs> for another awesome pep talk for Rick because he needed it because on the side note in the comic books at this point Andrea is not that positive towards Rick and Michonne seems to be pushing him and pushing him and pushing him in a good way so the group returns Rick is trying to talk to Tobin telling Tobin that the saviors are coming and all of a sudden the saviors pop up and I'm just like oh cool is Simon I'm just like hi Simon <laughs> I get so excited about all these characters coming back so Simon is looking for Daryl. Rick tries to play coy, and Simon's like, listen, if Daryl's there, the saviors are going to kill him. They need this group to see Daryl die. So the saviors are tearing everything up. All of a sudden, Simon notices that Alexandria has no food, and that's not good because another pickup is coming, and Rick says that they were going to scavenge for more stuff. Simon tells them to take risks and go the extra mile to find stuff for the pickup. And before he leaves, he tells Rick and the crew, listen, there's no statute of limitations on this whole we need to kill Daryl thing. He said it could be a month, a day, a year, three years down the line, we're still going to kill him. So apparently Gabriel was on watch, as we know. He disappeared, he cleared out the pantry, Tobin was supposed to cover his morning shift when Co Tobin got there, Gabriel was gone and there was a car going. Rick and Michonne refused to believe that Father Gabriel was playing Alexandria and hightailed it out of the settlement with all that food and weapons in a car for no reason and neither do I, I think something's up. So rick found father gabriel's bible and he wondered why would father gabriel leave it we all are wondering that and rosita claims that gabriel left and obviously he doesn't want to be found and all of a sudden rick sees in gabriel's bible the word boat eric doesn't want aaron to leave again and just so you know just so you know <laughs> This is foreshadowing something, possibly Eric's death, because whenever somebody says they don't want somebody to leave on The Walking Dead, they usually die. The same thing happened with Denise and Tara. We know that Denise died, so we may end up losing Eric. Eric knows that Rick and the crew did not go scavenging and that they are planning something. By scavenging, I mean getting stuff for the saviors and eric does not want aaron to go obviously aaron has this whole stance whereas if rick is a part of this fight then everyone is a part of the fight and eric just wants to see both of them live and all i can think about during that scene is the comic book and eric's storyline and I wonder, are the writers going to allow it to play out the way that it does in the comic books, or are they going to remix it? I'll let you know if they end up remixing it. So Rick, Michonne, Tara, and Aaron head out to the boat area, the place where Rick and Aaron were maybe two or three days before, because I think it's been two days, right? maybe a day maybe two days since the mid-season finale happened anyway um they're looking for father gabriel rick finds a footprint he tells michonne the group heads to an area that looks like a junkyard and has a heck of a lot of weeds all of a sudden they find themselves surrounded by a bunch of young people and quite a few folks that look way under the age of 40 years old Rick starts smiling and people think he's going crazy like why is he smiling does he realize this? this is the end no honey he's smiling because this is yet another group that he can recruit to become a part 
of the fight known as All Out War. And before I forget, in regards to that scene where Richard turns his gun on the Savior and the Savior turns his gun on Richard, Richard's in trouble, the kingdom's in trouble, this might be the way or the reason why the kingdom gets on board with fighting Negan and the Saviors. I'm assuming whatever happens in this exchange is going to push Ezekiel to be like, I'm gung-ho, I'm down, Annie up. But anyway, guys, you all take care. I love you all. Bye, guys. I can't wait to watch tonight's episode. Bye. <laughs>